We're chit chat here. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Base Sunday. I'm your host, Frank Malicote. Got a full plate today of terrific guests. The Golden State Warriors' new president, a terrific singer that is now giving back, a nonprofit helping out a Bay Area community, and a restaurateur that has a terrific menu and a giving spirit. And a reminder, we encourage you to follow us on social media. We've got lots of extras there, behind the scenes information, gadget reviews like uh, these Angry Bird speakers. There they are for the iPhone. Please like our Facebook page, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Twitter. You know the drill. And if you've got a good idea, love to hear from you at those social networking sites or go to cbssf.com. All right, enough plugs. Our first guest has been on a journey both professionally and personally. He started out as a ball boy for the NBA Seattle Supersonics moons ago at the age of 16, and it now is the COO and the president of the Golden State Warriors. He also came out this past spring, the very first pro uh, sports executive to be openly gay. Please welcome Warriors president and COO Rick Welts. How are you? Great to be here, Frank. Thank good, you. Good to have you. Welcome uh, welcome to the Bay Area. Thank I know you. Uh, October, right? You just yes. uh, just it's, landed uh, here? I'm still a newbie, but I'm having a great time. Okay, well, we'll talk about the Warriors, but, uh, you know, the big story earlier this spring, I guess, you decided to come out. Tell us about the timing of that, and why has it taken so long in the world of sports? I know it's kind of a a macho world there, but why has it taken so long for executives and players to basically come out, especially in today's society, and uh, what held you back for so many years? Well, I, you know, like everybody, I think we want the opportunity to pursue our passion in a way that's going to allow us to be as successful as we possibly can. And you're right. I think uh, professional sports, male professional sports, uh, is really kind of the last bastion, a little bit out of touch with, I think, the rest of our society in terms of, you know, how we treat the issue of sexual orientation. Uh, we have a really, really hard time talking about it. And, you know, the question for me was if I took this public step, uh, would it really engender the kind of conversation that I hoped it would about the subject and be a catalyst potentially for change? And also, you know, my problem, I think, in deciding when was that there's no one who has done this ahead of me. Right. And I didn't have the the luxury of looking at somebody else no go blueprint. through this experience and say, hey, you know what, uh, it's actually going to turn out okay. And as a result, you know, I was like most other people who are in my situation where uh, I really wasn't sure that I wanted to take what risk I couldn't exactly assess in deciding how this would affect my career going forward. And uh, the response, I know you're very close to Bill Russell, uh, years up in uh, Seattle and such, uh, Hall of Famer for the Celts, and he was pretty matter-of-fact about it, I guess, right? Well, uh, he was. I, somebody I've, you know, ha had a great friendship with over 30 or so years, and, uh, you know, we spent about Mm, five minutes discussing this and then went on to talk about his uh, visit to the White House and experiences with uh, President Obama. So, you know, I the way I decided to go about doing this was really, you know, I'm a guy in a suit that works for a professional sports team. If I'm doing my job well, I'm as far from the stage as I can possibly be. My job is really to shine a, a brighter light on the on the athletes and the coaches that really make up our game, the things that fans really care about. So I'm a background guy, so deciding to take this step, you know, to be very public about this issue was a big one for me. And to do it, you know, I decided to enlist uh, the best known people, you know, in our industry, people like our commissioner, David Stern, people like Bill Russell, Steve Nash, our two-time MVP point guard in Phoenix. And, uh, you know, really through them, uh, the story was told, and, and I, uh, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. How much better do you feel living a true life now? Well, I, you know, I, I, it wasn't uh, as if I didn't have a great life before. In fact, as I was debating this, uh, yeah. you know, friends and family, I would say, were maybe 50-50 divided about, sure. you know, whether this was really the smartest thing to do. On one hand, you've got a great life, you've got the greatest job, you're loving life. What, you know, why? Why do you want to subject yourself to this? And others who really understood that, you know, to have the opportunity to, to maybe make a contribution here, maybe that next person would have an opportunity to watch me go through this or you know what's really been the most impactful to me is you know the messages whether it's phone text letter or email that I've gotten from kids and kids parents who yeah. are are trying to tell their kids or kids who are trying to understand that maybe it's possible to pursue my passion in life because of who I am not in spite of who I am 
Well, a role model, to say the least, for those kids. Uh, quickly about the Warriors. You come in, you get the truncated season. Uh, you got a new coach, Mark Jackson. Um, talk about your team. Where are we going this year? And uh, there are rumors swirling that, you know, maybe you may be moving someday, too, here to San Francisco. Well, we have so much on our plate right now. Right. Uh, we have a team that's made the playoffs once in the last 17 years. We have brand new ownership. Uh, uh, about a year old now. The three things that are most important in the success of a sports franchise are ownership, ownership, and ownership. Mm -hmm. We've got that right now. Uh, what we're doing right now is is making a commitment to greatness as far as the organization is. When I didn't expect to be doing this. I wanted to take a couple of years off after leaving Phoenix and do some other things. Uh, but this opportunity presented itself and I have to tell you being in the league my whole life, uh, there is no franchise in sports that people have looked at and said there's a greater opportunity for success here that hasn't been mine, greater than any other franchise in sports. And we really believe it. We believe the incredible fan support, the market in which we live, it's going to be so attractive to players who want to come and play here. Uh, we've announced, as you just referenced, that we're, you know, have every intention after our lease expires at Oracle in five years to uh, to be in a new building. So that's a, that's a pretty exciting thing on the horizon as well. And where that building is is a big question, but uh, we'll see where that all goes. I know you got Kevin Durant in the Thunder tonight, so I'll shake your hand and yeah. say good, good luck. luck. <laughs> yeah, right. Great young player. Great to meet you, Rick. Thank good you. luck to the Warriors, too. Golden State Warriors continue their compressed season, and you can see more about them and Rick Welch said, Warriors, nice and easy.com. We'll be right back. More Bay Sunday right after the break. Stay right there.